If the sun decided to stop producing light, then the animals in the wild would be the first to notice. Most animals need daytime to roam from place to place, especially in the large savannas in Africa. Zebras, wildebeests, and giraffes all need the day to move to avoid predators. As soon as the sun goes down, it's their bedtime. If the sun suddenly went dark, animals wouldn't comprehend what was going on and would simply become an early lunch for predators. Nocturnal creatures would be equally confused at the time change. Birds usually flock during the day, so we wouldn't hear or see any of them. We have them to thank for eating pests in the sky. Well, them and bats. But if you're in an area with no bats, then consider the insects to be the winners here. Temperatures would start to drop gradually. Humans would notice the effects as well. We're used to having the sun shining at the peak of noon. But with the sunshine's disappearance, we would be living in total darkness. It'd just be a matter of survival. If the sun suddenly got dark, then we'd only have around eight minutes to enjoy the rest of it. That's because it takes that much time for sunlight to travel thousands of miles across the solar system. We would have to use UV lights to grow some crops, but it wouldn't be enough to feed the whole world, not to mention the dropping temperatures across the world. Survival would be difficult in the open plain. Everyone would have to duck inside shelters and warm bunkers. Plants need photosynthesis to grow. Without it, we wouldn't have any crops. Bread wouldn't exist since it needs wheat. Even the algae in the oceans need photosynthesis to survive, which is the highest source of oxygen rather than forests. This means oxygen levels would start to deplete. Large bodies of water like lakes, oceans, and seas would also start to lack oxygen to sustain marine life. One of our main sources of vitamin D is the sun. There are other ways of getting it, but the sun is the best and most convenient way. Without crops or vegetation, all the herbivores would have to rummage for the last green grass on land or a leaf hanging from a tree. They would soon run out of food, which would also be bad news for us humans, since we need animals like cows, horses, and sheep for our livelihoods. This wouldn't happen overnight. Of course, the oceans would remain warm for some time, but eventually, they would get cold and freeze. Earth is still a planet powered by an iron core that produces so much heat. This would not be enough to keep the planet warm. Our next step would be finding the right shelter and keeping warm. If this happened overnight, then chances are there wouldn't be any ready-made bunkers for a scenario like this. Unless you're watching this video and decide to build one after. They would have to provide heat 24-7 and be capable of growing crops under UV light. Solar-powered facilities would be a thing of the past. People would have to wear sustainable suits when venturing out into the open. Since it would be so dark, we would need strong lights or powerful night vision goggles to see anything. The lands would be desolate. Nocturnal creatures that can handle freezing temperatures would take it over. Structures would collapse since there would be oxygen depletion. Concrete needs oxygen to remain intact. The bunkers themselves would have limited oxygen as well. We would need to uproot many trees and place them under strong UV lights for them to produce oxygen. In turn, it would produce its ecosystem in the large underground bunkers. The oceans on the surface would freeze over eventually. Gathering any natural resources from the ocean floor, like gas or oil, would be impossible. The large object, which used to be a bright and sunny star, would still be floating around. But what would happen if the sun disappeared overnight? Well, pretty much the same thing, except way worse. The sun is the largest celestial object in our solar system, which keeps all of our planets lined up the way they are. They orbit around the sun, minding their own business. Without such a large object keeping them steady, the planets would start to float around randomly. Some might even collide with each other. In other cases, the planets would just float around and fly off into space eventually, until they found a new star to orbit around. Earth might or might not be one of those planets. Our planet would still be dark. We would be flying through space at an unusual speed. The planet wouldn't rotate on itself, and many objects would crash into us. We'd be in the trajectory line of mass comets waiting to strike us down. 
The threat of the cold wouldn't be a major factor anymore. It would be what's beyond us. This means we'd have to dig our bunkers deeper. We wouldn't have an atmosphere anymore to trap any form of heat or anything. We would be floating for an eternity. But let's go back to that scenario where the sun just decided to go dark. Don't worry, our planet would still be orbiting the sun along with the other planets. The temperatures would keep plummeting until nothing could survive on the surface. It would be total darkness 24-7. Only bacteria, and possibly tardigrades, could survive on the surface. Tardigrades are microscopic critters that can survive just about anything, including outer space. Eventually, oxygen would be absent from the Earth's surface, and there wouldn't be anything up there anymore, except for them. Since they would be the dominant and possibly the only creatures on the surface, they'd manage to evolve into bigger species and produce many more. Hundreds of thousands of years into the future, Humans would have had to evolve to the conditions underground. Our eyes would be much bigger to take up as much light as possible. Our skin would become whiter since there would be no sun underground. Our hearing would also be much more sensitive since the underground would create echoing sounds. We'd still have the intellect we do now, but our bodies would be ready for the surface. The main threat would be the giant tardigrades sluggishly dragging themselves around. Under a microscope, they look kind of cute, but imagine them the size of a polar bear. Still want something like this in your backyard? They can live anywhere, so they'd infiltrate the bunkers now and then. They'd get ferocious and come in different sizes and shapes. At this point, humans would not be the dominant species since they'd have to hide underground. Some tardigrades from different tribes wouldn't be friendly with each other. Major cities that used to be bustling with people would be home to giant water bears. Tardigrades are known as water bears since they kind of look like little bears. But these beasts with eight legs would be much bigger than them. Bears and most animals would have been wiped out on the surface. Under the ice, some deep sea creatures would thrive and have moved closer to the surface. These animals were used to living in darkness away from the sun. But over thousands of years of dominating the waters, they'd have grown to enormous sizes. Some of these creatures would adapt to crawling out of the mainland. Even though the surface would be frozen, they'd still find ways to crack through the ice and make their way. Humans, meanwhile, would create large underground channels and networks, building cities and colonies. We'd dominate the tunnels where our hands and feet would grow to become web-like and large. We'd take over everything underground and remain the smartest species on Earth. We'd manage to keep old art pieces from the surface and important records to stay as human as possible. We'd keep on surviving no matter what. It's becoming colder by the minute. The temperature drops below zero very quickly. And although there's no snow, the cold is becoming unbearable. Hoarfrost appears on the ground, the grass, and the trees. And ice forms on bodies of water at an incredible rate. Shivering people all over the planet raise their eyes to the sky, and their jaws drop in disbelief. The sun has become twice as small as it used to be. It now looks like a distant speck, and it won't be able to heat the Earth any longer. But the worst thing is, there's a huge blazing rock coming right at the horrified spectators from the sky, and the impact with that thing will undoubtedly do a lot of damage. Okay, let's go back to our objective reality. The Earth is exactly in the sweet spot of our solar system. It's neither too close nor too far from the sun, making the temperature on our planet not just tolerable, but rather pleasant. Scientists often call Venus, the second planet from the sun, our Earth's evil twin, because it's so hot and inhospitable that no life is possible on it. Of course, there are thick clouds in its atmosphere that rain acid, and the greenhouse gases raise the temperature on the surface to unbearable values. But even if Venus didn't have those, nothing would still be able to live there because of the proximity to the sun. If there was any liquid water, it would evaporate too quickly, leaving life no chance to develop. On the other hand, Mars, going next in line after Earth, is a bit too far away from the sun, which makes it cold and lonely. The temperature on its surface is below freezing, 
and it never warms up enough for water to stay liquid for long. That's not to mention the lack of atmosphere on the red planet, the element that provides the Earth with breathable air. So, if our planet shifted closer to or farther away from the Sun, its temperature would either rise or fall respectively. A few hundred miles wouldn't make much difference. The circling of Earth around the Sun is uneven anyway, and we constantly get nearer to our star or fly a bit away from it. The distance that would matter is measured in millions of miles. And yeah, just like I showed you at the beginning of this video, we'd see the Sun a lot smaller than we do now if we went that far. The temperatures might not fall at the exact moment of the shift, as there would still be some warmth left. But in the following winter, our planet would probably stay cold forever. The oceans would be covered with ice, and the overall sea level would drop. And ultimately, the ice would reflect more of the sun's heat back into the atmosphere and space, not allowing the surface of our planet to get the necessary warmth. And more ice means less water vapor in the atmosphere. Water vapor captures heat, too, creating clouds. So the colder it is, the less rain. The cold and the lack of rain would not let any plants survive for long. So the areas of icy and barren landscape would grow fast, leaving only the areas along the banks of rivers intact for a while. After some time, the rivers would stop running, too, either frozen or dried out because of losing their sources lakes and seas, which would, of course, freeze as well. Any life dwelling near them would disappear. Plants first, and with them, everything else, since plants produce both food and breathable air. And with that, the Earth would become a frozen wasteland. As for the giant blazing rock I mentioned, it was an asteroid coming from outer space because of the shift of our planet's orbit. Jupiter the largest planet in our solar system, acts as a natural shield for us against space rocks. It has a huge mass, and most asteroids flinging from outer space get caught in its gravity and fall on its surface. There's no life possible on Jupiter, and its surface is gaseous, so asteroids tend to disappear in it without a trace. Still, some manage to get past Jupiter, where Mars comes into play. It also contributes to our defense by holding the asteroid belt between itself and Jupiter in place. The two planets' combined mass creates a gravitational field that doesn't allow the asteroids from the belt to fly in random directions, hitting everything in their path. If there was no Mars between us and the belt, we'd be used to meteor showers almost more than actual rains. Say the Earth has replaced Mars in its orbit, and now, we're hundreds of millions of miles farther away from the Sun. The mass of the Earth is more or less similar to that of Mars, so the asteroid belt is still in its place. The temperatures will still fall, though, and life will soon go extinct. But if Mars stayed where it is, and the Earth just shifted away, it would be a recipe for disaster. There's no chance the planets would orbit the Sun at the same rate because their mass is not equal. At some point, they would collide with each other. Taking their speed into account, they'd both crack and shatter, perhaps creating another asteroid belt in our solar system. It would be no more hopeful for us if the Earth decided to jump closer to the Sun. Apart from the star seeming more like a giant, pitiless blazing ball in the sky, its heat would melt the glaciers on our planet, making sea levels rise abruptly. The water would flood major parts of the continents, and more surfaces of the planet would be covered with water, which means more heat absorption. That would bring about a further rise in the temperature. Also, those large bodies of water would evaporate like crazy, releasing tons of water vapor and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that absorbs heat, and so does water vapor. Together, they would trap more and more of the sun's warmth, creating thick, roiling clouds in the sky, almost like on Venus, but without the acid. And that thick blanket of clouds would also contribute to heating the surface of our planet. 
In the end, the entire Earth would heat up so much that life on its surface would become unbearable for most. Only the sturdiest of creatures would be able to survive temperatures so high. Those that dwell in our deserts, for example. Despite the rainfall, which wouldn't cease as in the cold scenario, plants would still have difficulty adapting to the new and hot environments. The ones in the cooler regions of the planet would be the first to wilt and go. But then, plants from the moderate and finally tropical climes would also give up. And yet again, the Earth would turn into a barren ball of rock, only this time an overheated one rather than frozen. Our planet's distance from the Sun, its tilt, its speed of rotation around its own axis, its orbit around the Sun, and even the presence of the Moon in its skies, all of that is crucial for life on Earth to exist. For instance, if the planet wasn't tilted relative to the Sun, it would be unbearably hot on the equator and impossibly cold at the poles. The seasons would also stop changing, dividing the Earth into strips of endless summer and winter. Our planet is heated up evenly from all sides, with the current tilt and rotation like you would roast a barbecue. It turns to the sun with one side to warm it up, while the other cools down during the night. Were there no change of night and day, we'd probably only live in some areas of our planet where constant, never-ending twilight would be. Just imagine our life without those beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Maybe we'll just let it stay as it is, okay? In July, when we're about 94 million miles from the sun, the world is about 36 degrees Fahrenheit warmer overall than in January, when we're 3 million miles closer. This is because there's more dry land in the northern half of the planet than the southern half, and land tends to heat up more than water. During the northern summer in July, more land is heated up than in January. So the planet gets a little warmer at this time, even though we're further from our source of heat. The closer the moon is to the horizon, the larger it looks. This phenomenon is called the moon illusion. One of the theories explaining it claims that the atmosphere plays the role of a magnifying glass, which makes the moon look bigger. In reality, if the atmosphere had a say in it, the moon would actually look smaller, not bigger. Most experts believe that the illusion is created by your own mind. It can increase the moon's size more than twice. When Earth's satellite is high up in the sky, you don't have any visual cues about how far away it is. But when it's near the horizon, you can see objects surrounding it in detail. It makes the moon look larger. But it's just one of the many theories explaining the phenomenon. By the way, you can trick yourself out of this illusion if you bend down and look the moon upside down through your legs. A day on Venus is longer than a year. It takes the planet 243 Earth days to rotate around itself, and only 225 Earth days to make a full circle around the Sun. Around 5 million years ago, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy launched a star from itself, and it's now traveling through the Milky Way 10 times faster than any other star out there. Saturn's rings are very thin compared to its size. If you had a scale model of the planet that was 3 feet wide, the rings would be 10,000 times thinner than a razor blade. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, scientists discovered some abnormalities on the planet's surface showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hasn't finished cooling down yet. The Earth and the Moon are gradually drifting apart, as slowly as your fingernails grow. This is the flip side of our satellite's gravitational force. The Moon creates tides in the Earth's oceans. They pull back at the Moon and make it speed up. This in turn moves the satellite to a higher orbit. In prehistoric times, the Moon was way closer to our planet than it is now. Luckily, we aren't going to lose the Moon. The farther away it moves, the weaker its gravitational pull becomes. It means that soon, our planet won't be pushing the Moon away with such a force. Discovered in 2017, Kelt 9b is the hottest planet we know of. Next time you're complaining about the heat on a scorching summer day, just remember that temperatures on this planet can reach 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because it orbits really close to its star, 
which is called KELT-9. This thing is way hotter and bigger than our sun. Experts believe that the giant star might someday evaporate the entire planet with its intense heat. Kind of a sizzling solar sauna, wouldn't you say? Everything on Earth, and everything people have managed to see in space with the help of telescopes and other instruments, is normal matter. It's made up of atoms and molecules, and adds up to less than 5% of the universe. Almost three quarters of the universe is dark energy. Astronomers wouldn't even know the thing existed if several decades ago they hadn't found out that the expansion of the universe wasn't slowing down. Quite the opposite, it was accelerating. It meant there had to be some enigmatic force that counteracted gravity. It got dubbed dark energy. Cold welding is a phenomenon in space when two pieces of the same metal join together without any trouble and heat. About 700 million years ago, a mysterious event that occurred may have turned Venus into the place it is now. Admittedly, astronomers can't see the surface of the planet directly because it's covered with dense layers of thick clouds. But space missions that have been sent to the hot planet found that Venus is peppered with fire-breathing volcanoes, massive mountains, countless craters, and gigantic lava plains. The temperatures on the planet are so incredibly high that they could melt lead. And the atmospheric pressure is so immense that it would instantly crush any living being reckless enough to set foot on it. If that's not enough, the atmosphere of the planet is filled with noxious clouds of sulfuric acid, which smells worse than rotten eggs. Carbon dioxide, the main component of Venus's atmosphere, along with the infamous sulfuric acid, create a powerful greenhouse effect. As a result, the lower atmosphere and the surface of the planet are some of the hottest places in the whole solar system. Neutron stars are the size of a small city, yet their mass is about 1.4 times that of the Sun. They're formed when massive stars die and their cores collapse in on themselves. The core continues to press in on itself until all the electrons are essentially crushed together, leaving only neutrons. This makes neutron stars one of the densest objects in the universe. In fact, a single teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh a billion tons. Of course, getting this sample and delivering it back to Earth might be a difficult task, since the gravity on a neutron star is two billion times stronger than the gravity on our planet. Because of the effect the Moon has on Earth, our planet is gradually rotating slower and slower. And I mean very gradually, at around 17 milliseconds every 100 years. So. It will take 140 million years before the world can add a single extra hour to its day. But that also means that when the dinosaurs existed, there were only 23 hours in a day. There's very little activity going on inside the moon. Plus, there's almost no atmosphere around. That's why scientists can trace impact craters littering the satellite surface back billions of years. While dating the craters, astronomers discovered that the moon, along with our planet, went through a late heavy bombardment about 4 billion years ago. This event is also known as the Lunar Cataclysm. This interval lasted several hundred million years. During it, an unusually large number of asteroids collided with Earth, Mercury, Mars, and Venus. The newest scientific theory claims that Venus could have had a pleasant, stable climate for billions of years before something went wrong. Astronomers did thorough research and built a model of a virtualized Venus-like world. This model demonstrated that for most of its history, the hot planet had oceans with liquid water, adequate temperatures, and stable tectonic plates. In fact, the planet resembled Earth as it used to be at the beginning of its life. Scientists suppose that this period of Earth-like development could have lasted for more than 3 billion years. Saturn is a planet with winds that travel at more than 1,100 miles per hour at the equator. It's also the planet with the most prominent rings. The atmosphere of Saturn isn't really different from its surface, but the deeper you go, the higher the pressure becomes and hydrogen becomes liquid. Further to the center of the planet, this liquefied gas turns into metallic hydrogen. Like Jupiter, Saturn might have a rocky core with hydrogen and helium surrounding it. On the other hand, even if it is made up of rocky material, the core can still be liquid. Humans have been exploring space for over 60 years, 
and the effort has certainly paid off. All the planets in our solar system have now been explored, even the dwarf planets of Pluto and Ceres. Most of the exploration was done by NASA's Voyager program, which began in 1977. Voyager 1 and 2 collected information on the planets, their moons, and their unique systems of rings and magnetic fields. These twin spacecraft continue to send data back to Earth, and Voyager 1 is currently in interstellar space. The sky might appear pretty peaceful as you look at it from Earth, but the Milky Way is headed for a massive collision with the Andromeda galaxy. Four billion years from now, you can set your alarm. These galaxies will meet, and neither will survive. Stars will be scrambled, and constellations will be undone. Eventually, the two giants will merge and form an elliptical galaxy. But according to National Geographic, our Sun and Earth will survive. Any life forms on Earth will be treated to a splendid sight as the galaxies come together. <laughs>